the end zone. And I think the holder might have had a little problem with the snap on the play. Uh, but the, the kick sails wide left, no good. Uh, again, Bognano, that was his first uh, game attempt in about four weeks. He suffered an injury uh, during a soccer game and was hobbled around. I was at practice with him Thursday. He looked, he looked healthy again, but uh, couldn't get that one up. So the score will remain 0-0, 3.46 to play in the first quarter. Holy Cross will take over at the 20-yard line. All right, twin receivers to the right side, split to the left side. <clears throat> High formation in the backfield on first down. Musha on the trap play to the fullback. Uh, gain about two or three yards on the play. Palma did a nice job uh, reading the pulling guard and, and stepping up for the trap in the fullback. It's like Mac Grenier and uh, Nate Just converge on the tackle for the Pioneers in their home all green uniforms. Holy Cross, uh, silver helmets, silver pants. They'll go with uh, white jerseys and black numbers, a very basic uniform for the Crusaders. School of about a thousand boys in River Grove. Second down and seven. High formation again. Two receivers split out. The counter trade to the tailback. A lot of running room as he crosses the 30-yard line to the 32-yard line. It'll be first down for the Crusaders. Ball tackle, carrier. Tackle made by uh, Bellhouse. Brendan Lyon, the ball carrier for the Crusaders. Brought down on play by Bellhouse. It's going to be first and ten as uh, as uh, Holy Cross picks up their initial first down of the game. 250 to play in the first quarter, no score. Coming out on I pro pro left, which means a flanker left side split to the right. I formation in the backfield. Counter run the trade. counter trade to the other side. Lyon will try and sprint it out. He's going to be brought down on the play by, by Ebner as he crosses the 35-yard line. So it's going to be second down and about five or six for the Crusaders. Joe Tabor's in their right defensive end, and uh, the running back was able just uh, to get one step quicker on him to, to get the, around the corner, and that's something that uh, certainly needs to be conscious of that in the future because uh, the running backs do have that acceleration. Word was coming into this game that Holy Cross likes to run a lot of counters and a lot of traps, and uh, that has held true so far here in the first quarter. I formation, uh, Musha back to pass. is going to be taken down on the play by Han by Tony Crosser, the defensive end. That's Jimmy Fennessey. Or Jimmy Fennessey, my fault. Fennessey uh, drops Musha for a big loss of about 15 yards on the play. It's going to be third down and about 20. That, for was, a, that was a bootleg faking, uh, faking the counter tray, uh, which they've run a number of times here, and uh, Fennessey played that excellent. There were receivers open in the in the secondary as well, so that's good. We got the pressure pressure on the quarterback. Pioneers will do some switching on third and long to bring Ori Peterson off. They'll go with a four down lineman set. Going twins, twins to both sides. I yeah. spreading it out. Trips to the right now. As Mushab drops back to pass, long one down the sideline. It's going to be caught, caught at the 40. Still on his feet. And he is going to go into the end zone for a Holy Cross touchdown. And immediately the first thing you do is scan the field for flags. And there's, there's no uh, yellow hankies on the field. Bobby Stevens out jumped Matt Ebner. And that's not a hard thing to do. Ebner just 5'8". Stevens a little bit taller on the play. That'll be good for an 82-yard touchdown reception for Holy Cross. You are quick with the numbers, Pete. I guess. What an arm. That, that uh, was a heck of a throw there. Spiral right to him. Ebner was in the fingertips. As uh, the teams line up for the point after attempt. And number 11, Bobby Stevens, who caught the touchdown pass, will line up for the extra point. We noticed him kicking in pregame. Uh, not everything was going straight. So the kick is up, and it's a line drive. It gets through the left upright. 7-0 our score. River Holy Cross takes the lead over Allman. Let's take a timeout. It's Allman football here on 1270 WKBF. Yeah. <laughs> 
Back at Erickson Field, Holy Cross on a big 82-yard touchdown receptions by Bobby Stevens. He adds the extra point himself. It is 7-0 as the kickoff is a high short kick taken about the 20-yard line, and the Pioneers will return it up to the 30-yard line. That's where they'll start. Looks like uh, number 44 again on the uh, return. That's Josh Burkhead. Same kick, same, same location right on the numbers in the 20-yard line. An 82-yard touchdown reception, a, a brilliant pass right down the sidelines to Stevens. Stevens just out-jumped Matt Ebner on the play and uh, was down the sidelines for the Holy Cross touchdown. That coming at the 104 mark of the first quarter. We have under a minute to play in the quarter. 7-0 in the score, Holy Cross on top. This time the Pioneers will start with Nate Just up the middle. Just a short gain on first down. It appears Holy Cross is playing level coverage on the defensive back straight across the field in the line. Second down for the Pioneers. Ball spotted in the middle of the field at the 31-yard line. Clock running, 27 seconds to play in the quarter as David Jager turns around, walks down the sidelines and claps at his team. Holy Cross staying in a 5-2 defense. They're shifting that nose uh, to one side or another. On second and 10, 10 seconds to go in the quarter. The Pioneers will get another playoff. It's an option. A quick pitch to Bellhouse. Bellhouse to the 35, down to the 38-yard line. A nice hard run from Hank Bellhouse. It'll be third down and short, but that's the end of the first quarter. Well, let's take a break. Our score after one, Holy Cross 7, Alleman 0. It's Alleman football here on WKBF. Action at Erickson Field. The Alleman will have a third down and two from their own 38-yard line. They trail Holy Cross 7 and nothing. The Crusaders on the scoreboard with at the one minute mark of the first quarter behind an 82 yard touchdown reception by Bobby Stevens. And that came on a third and 20 play after Jimmy Fennessy had a nice long sack as uh, McGinnis under center, wishbone backfield, Bellhouse. And Bellhouse will pound his legs and he'll have a first down as he crosses the 40 yard line. Looks like he might have been stood up in the backfield, but he kept it working like uh, any good wishbone halfback should do. And he fought for the first down and got it. Came out in the wishbone and went 40, uh, 46 uh, or outside belly. We'd like to thank Cavanaugh's Hilltop Tavern. Not far from here, over 20 years of treating you right. And they're looking forward to doing it for 20 more. Great drink specials most of the night uh, and on weekends. They've got seven great TVs. You can watch all the games there. They're big Alleman supporters. McGinnis will keep it himself on the quarterback keeper as he hops and skips over a couple of Crusader defenders crossing into the 50-yard line near a first down marker for the Pioneers. And that was pretty determined here. That Once again, they ran the belly, belly play, outside belly, but it was a quarterback keep this time. That way you have both halfbacks leading off tackle with uh, certainly McGinnis uh, able to run. That's a great play. It'll be second down and short for the Pioneers. Ball spotted at the far hash right on the 50-yard line on this beautiful field here at Erickson uh, Field, the uh, pro turf. Uh, Augustana was in Elmhurst today. They pulled out a 28 to 21 victory. And uh, St. Ambrose also had a big win at St. Xavier. Just will keep it himself. Fights for the first down. He'll get it on a nice two or three yard gain for the senior fullback. Word is that uh, he may be following in the footsteps of his father and heading down to Illinois Wesleyan University to play football and possibly baseball. That's great. He's a good athlete. It'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers. Ball at the 46 yard line of Holy Cross. On first down, double wing set formation. They'll run a counter to Bellhouse. A lot of running room across the 40 yard line to the 30 yard line. Still on his feet at the 25 yard line before he is brought down. And it'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers. Brought down on the play by Jason Hess for Holy Cross. That'll slow their defense down quite a bit now because they haven't been successful in trying to run uh, that counter and misdirection, but now they've got to certainly respect it. Both teams have been very calm here the first first quarter, just running very generic generic plays, uh, base plays, and, and uh, that'll open things up a little bit more for, for Jess now. On first and 10, the Pioneers in good field position again, down to the 25-yard line of Holy Cross. McGinnis on the option. Will keep it himself, cuts it back up to the middle of the field, still on his feet, breaking tackles inside the 15, the 10 brought down at the seven yard line. A great hard nose run 
by the senior option quarterback Ryan McGinnis. That's a great run. Realistically, he should have lost one yard. Uh, the defensive end did a great job stretching that play out, running towards the sideline. Ryan made a great cut back upfield, broke a couple tackles there, turning and twisting, and got that yard pretty much on his own. 9.50 to play in the first half. Holy Cross 7, Alleman 0. It'll be first and goal from the nine yard line. Wishbone Back in the set. Wishbone. Tony Crosser splits out. They'll go with Barlow. Barlow close to the goal line, following the lead over uh, Ori Peterson as the Pioneers are going to be inside the five, right down around the two yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Look very similar to the 53 blaster. All three backs going through the same hole. Fullback and halfback leading for the backside halfback. Just power offense on that particular play. As the Alleman faithful on its feet, as the, the Alleman center actually working on some uh, short snaps on the sideline. At number 53, Nick Anderson. Having some problems getting yep. the play in, and we're going to call a timeout. So we'll take a timeout. 8.58 to play in the first half. Holy Cross 7, Alleman 0. Pioneers knocking at the barn. It's Alleman football here on AM 1270 WKBX. Matt Ebner will kick off. It's a squib kick, a short one. It's going to be touched by a Holy Cross defender, and he will fall on it right near the 36-yard line. So Holy Cross will take over in good field position as Bagnano uh, uh, makes the extra point. He missed a field goal earlier, uh, but they are electing to go with Matt Ebner to do the kickoffs to try and save his foot. As uh, Holy Cross will, uh, and the offense by Matt Musha will check back onto the field. Last time they were out, he hit Bobby Stevens in stride for an 82-yard touchdown reception that put the first points on the board. This time they'll line up in a wishbone formation. No tight ends, split ends to either side of the formation. On first down, new quarterback number nine into the game. And he'll hand the ball off to the fullback up the middle. He'll plunge into the line for a short gain. New quarterback Ryan Newman. Little different look here. They they were successful on a on a big pass play the last series that they were on the field. Come out now, uh, split the ends in, in a wishbone. So certainly a little different look here. Trying to see if that'll get things going for him. I guess. Ryan Cashion will bring the play in for Holy Cross. Newman, his second play from scrimmage. We'll see what formation they elect to go. They'll stay in the wishbone. Split ends. Allman staying in the five-two defense as well. Level coverage. Uh, Loose wishbone formation, tailbacks or the uh, fullbacks really deep. Handoff will go over right tackle, almost a fumble on the play as he wasn't a clean handoff, but he'll have a gain of about two or three yards on the play. That is number 33, Adrian Padilla. I guess they liked Allman's offense so well, uh, running that outside belly. That's what they just ran this this past play. Uh, fake the fullback inside, lead halfback off tackle. The problem was they had their split in, split out, so they, they lost the blocker there, uh, and their halfback was not able to block our defensive end. Matt Musha will check back in to quarterback for the Crusaders as Newman checks in for two plays, and then Musha comes in for third down and four from the 41. Clock moving 7-15 to play. In, and uh, we have movement on the line, and I think Allman came up and switched around, and that threw off Holy Cross. We'll see what the referees do with here as Holy Cross will walk back, and they're going to take him back five yards. So they were getting back in their eye formation, uh, put twins to the wide side of the field on the left side. Uh, offensive lineman uh, got a little antsy there when they saw the defensive lineman move. Third down and nine for the Pioneer or the, for the Crusaders as. Uh, from third and four, now third and nine after the movement call. I formation, twin receivers split to the wide side of the field. That's the opposite of end. Here at Erickson Field, under seven minutes to play in the half. All tied at seven. Newman drops back to pass, or Musha drops back to pass. It's going to be no, dropped on the play. It would have been good for a first down. Intended receiver, Mike McMillian. Once again, faking the counter tray action and uh, booted around. Receivers uh, was open. 
And, Two uh, receivers open. Yep, and uh, just was, wasn't able to hang on to the ball. I uh, went to the Iowa Illinois game today. I saw quite a bit of that even at the collegiate level, so it does happen. That's one bad thing in the in the playoffs at this time of the year. If you don't have perfect weather, it's tough to throw the ball that much. Matt Ebner and Jeremy Howard back deep at their 25-yard line for the Pioneers. Uh, into punt for Holy Cross. Can't quite get his number. He's a big guy, though. Low snap. He's got some problems, but Allman didn't have anybody around to block it this time as Howard is going to pick it up near the 40-yard line. He's going to be tackled, wrapped up out of bounds near the Pioneer sideline by number 26. That is Anthony Lupo. Looked like the punter might have been the tight end, Pat DeBauer. A big kept, guy, he 6 kept, 3, uh, 205. He kept his head there, kept his composure, uh, dropped the snap, still picked it up and was able to get it off. Uh, didn't gain many yards, but it uh, was better than uh, getting sacked. First and 10 for the Pioneers, good field position at the 43-yard line, their own 43-yard line, 6.30 to play in the second quarter. All tied, 7-7, seven to seven. winner of this game will face Riverside Brookfield. Pulled off a shocker this afternoon, trailing by 15 points, coming back and taking Geneseo down in the fourth quarter. Handoff goes to Nate just up the middle. Awkward handoff, just gets it, moves across the 45-yard line to the 46. It's going to be second down and six for the Pioneers. But uh, if, you're, if, if you're Nate Just, he's getting four or five yards of crack on first down, you're probably sitting in good good position. Certainly. They, they, this time they ran the belly, but they did give it to the fullback inside, faked it to the halfbacks outside. They've seen it given to the halfbacks enough. They have to respect that. That, along with that misdirection uh, counterplay that they ran earlier, is going to open things up for Nate. As uh, a couple of new guys in on the line for the Pioneers, I see McRaneer and Jeremy Klingeman out. This time the handoff go to Bellhouse. Bellhouse across the 50-yard line. Penalty flag, late penalty flag. Uh, we'll see this coming from the side judge on the opposite side by Holy Cross sideline. <clears throat> we'll see what the preliminary signal from the head official is holding called against the Pioneers. That'll move them back. That hurts. Uh, they, got, they have something going here. Once again, now they fake inside, go outside. Nothing real, real uh, fancy about it. Just going right at him with the belly play. Uh, but uh, you know, if you hold hold him and uh, you get backed up or called for it, uh, you know, it just kill, can kill a drive. So it would have been uh, third down and one or two. Instead, it'll be second down and 12 for the Pioneers, or 13. Back to the 40-yard line. It could have been. Uh, it would have been third down and two from the 49-yard line of Holy Cross. Now we go back to the 39-yard line of Alleman for second and 13. 5.30 to play in the first half, all tied 7-7. Seven to seven. Two downs to get 13 yards here. Split right, double wing. Double wing set formation just in the backfield. McGinnis on the keeper is going to be pulled down from behind. Small gain, gain of about a yard. Good time for us to thank Deru Funeral Home, family owned and operated for quite a long time. Kevin Deru, Larry Rafferty, and Kevin Rafferty are at your service 24 hours a day. In Moline, that is Deru Funeral Home. Right idea, you need big yards, you go with Ryan McGinnis. Problem there was there was a number of white jerseys in the Almond backfield. So on third down and 12, will the Pioneers elect to throw their second pass of the half? They split left here, double wing or, or uh, ace formation. McGinnis will look out. He's got Bellhouse open. He's going to throw it down. His arm was hit on the play. Bellhouse makes the adjustment and the catch at the 34-yard line. I thought that ball might have been, uh, was looking to be picked off on the play by Drew Williams, but Bellhouse got better position on Williams, and he came up with the grab. It was a, a wounded duck from McGinnis, but I think his arm got hit on the pass. It was up there a while. We ran the same play. Basically, you got your split in. He runs a post route, runs the defensive back off, and you have your halfback coming out of the backfield swinging down the sideline. So clears that area out and, and uh, was very effective. And I've seen them run that early in the year, and they do a great job with that. That was a nice big play. Third, or uh, instead of first. third and 12, now we have first down and 10 for the Pioneers at the 34-yard line of Holy Cross. 420 to play in the second half. McGinnis will keep it himself on the option to 30. Down to the 25, the 24-yard line, fighting as he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Close to the first down marker. Appeared to be the outside uh, veer or read uh, to the left side. Uh, defensive end once again picks up uh, fullback, picks up just. So, so McGinnis, a man they like to carry the ball as well, uh, picks up big yards. Uh, it'll be second down and short for the Pioneers as the referees will spot the football in the near hash right at the 25-yard line. 
Right now, Holy Cross is sort of scratching the head. Almond's throwing, uh, you know, a lot of th not a lot of different plays, but the plays they have thrown uh, have been effective uh, opposite their their base plays. McGinnis at the line tells linemen what the play is. Now referees are going to stop the clock, and they'll come over to the sidelines. Probably something wrong with the clock as uh, we'd like to thank Del Newton, Allstate Insurance agent Del Newton on the Avenue of the Quad Cities. He's uh, all for your auto home and life, a boat, uh, just a great guy, Del Newton. Uh, actually, Del's the president of the Orion uh, Booster Club, so he was out in Orion today. Dan, he's a big Iowa Hawkeye fan, and he was uh, unhappy that Orion chose to play on Saturday because I think he had to miss today's Iowa-Illinois game. Well, if you're an Iowa fan, it was a good game. Unfortunately, I'm Illinois, and <laughs> it was not such a good game. They put six seconds back up on the clock. No, now they, they put four seconds. It's gonna be yep. a, We're going to be here long, all night. Long game. I feel like I'm watching Muscatine. <laughs> It'll be second down and short for the Pioneers. 4.04 to play in the first half. 7-7 seven seven the score. Ball at the 25. Second down and one. They'll go with two, a double wing set formation. Fellhouse. Split to the left. Fellhouse and uh, Barlow. The wingman and the referees is going to stop it again. And now what do we have? Uh, I, I think they started the clock a little too early. They're going to put four seconds back on, so it'll be 4 4 They've done that twice now. They've started the clock without the without the ball being uh, snapped. I'm not sure what's going on there. But we're back to 4-0-4. 4-0-4 left in the first half. We're all tied at seven apiece. Holy Cross took a 7-0 lead near the end of the first quarter on an 82-yard touchdown reception. Allman answered early in the second quarter. They are driving again. Just, just over the 25-yard line will have enough for the first down. Or should have enough for the first down. It's a first. Yep, first and 10 for the Pioneers. Ball right at the 24-yard line of Holy Cross. And this is what Allman has done all year long. They hold on to the ball for long periods of time. They get two or three uh, yards here and there. Occasionally will break out a big play. Pierce, we're going back to the wishbone, split left, wishbone. 3.45 to play in the first half. Tied at seven, Allman on the move at the 24 of Holy Cross. McGinnis under center, roll out with the option, tries to spin away from the first tackler. Can't quite do it. He's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Brought down on the play by number 26, Pat Joyce. That was, a, that was an 18 option base, which, which means rather than unblocking or leaving the defensive end unblocked, the tight end blocks him, which gives your quarterback greater opportunity to run the football. And that's what he elected to do. Second down and 10. McGinnis may have lost a yard on the play. Ball now spotted on the other side of the 25 at the 26. Another flag on the coach. He's out on the field again. I wonder if whole, oh, wow, he just threw his clipboard down. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the head coach. But it's going to be uh, marked off as a 15-yard penalty as uh, the, the sideline was warned. And you know what, Dan, trying to get a hold of the coach uh, this week, they're, you could just tell by, I was talking to one of the assistant coaches who didn't want to tell me who he was, but they're not happy about coming here. Uh, they think it's a stretch. They think they're playing in Nebraska or something. In reality, it's just a couple hours. Uh, but they didn't want to come here. They feel, you know, why should we go to the Quad Cities? They're not going to do anything. And the there attitude has come. Bellhouse in motion, broken bone formation. Ball's on the carpet, and Holy Cross recovers. Uh, McGinnis and... Barlow ran into each other on the counter play. It would have been a big gainer. The hole was there. Came out split left and ace or double wing. Tried to run the, the uh, cross inside, misdirection. And the halfback and uh, McGinnis ran right into each other, causing the fumble. Number 71, Jason Dassinger, comes up with the fumble recovery for the Crusaders. I'm just, Pete, I'm not, I'll tell you, I'm just glad that they don't have that, uh, or didn't have that uh, uh, penalty when I coach because I spent most of the time out on the hash mark here but if you step on the field and the, the fellow was only probably one step onto the field they, they they jumped on him real quick and who knows what he was saying that's true first and ten I formation three receiver set handoff up the middle of the tailback met hard as he crosses the line of scrimmage for a small gain of one or two yards it looked like Musha still in at quarterback 
for the Crusaders. Try to spread things out there and go up the gut and then uh, with, without much success here. Second down and nine from the 21 of Holy Cross, 2.30 to go. Tied at seven, seven to seven. They'll go uh, twin receivers to the wide side of the field, a single receiver to the opposite end, I formation in the backfield. Musha drops, three-step drops, trying to hit the slant pattern, he does. It's completed right near the 30-yard line to number 11, Bobby Stevens. And that's a good play call on their part. Uh, Allman's defensive backs are pretty much in level coverage, giving them quite a bit of cushion there to that inside receiver, and they're going to probably come back to that unless there's some type of uh, pressure put back on him. And if Allman wins this game, they're going to see plenty of stuff like that next week when they have to play Riverside Brookfield. 2-10 to play in the half, 7-7 seven to seven the score as they'll bring the chain gain onto the field to do a measurement. It gives us time to thank Orthopedics and Rheumatology Associates of the Quad Cities. Offices on both sides of the river, leaders in sports and medicine. Big thanks to uh, Bob Cunningham at Orthopedics and Rheumatology Associates. Good enough for a first down uh, just by the tip of the football. So it'll be first and 10 for Holy Cross. All spotted at their own 31 yard line with 210 to play. Our score, Allman 7, Holy Cross 7. Pioneers have had plenty of opportunities to put more points on the board. They've they missed a field goal and have two fumbles. And uh, two minutes left to go in the game here. You know, one way or another, you need some momentum. And I'm sure Holy Cross is thinking that uh, going into half. They've got uh, twins to both sides of the backfield shotgun. Shotgun formation, Musha. Drops back, they're trying, trying to run a middle screen. And Musha breaks away from Grenier and Fennelly, and there's a clip blocked behind the back, so this one's coming back. He's still, still running, running. Down the left sideline. This one is going to be, uh, he's going to be taken down near the 36-yard line, but big number 77 threw a block in the back. That's Miguel Villegas. And, uh, Boy, I'll tell you what, I don't know about their pass blocking, but uh, there, was, there were three yeah. guys pass blocking, and Allman had four or five guys rushing. He had no time to get rid of that football, but he did a great job of scrambling back there. I thought they were, might be trying to run the middle screen there. Even uh, if you do, you need to hold them up for, right. a, for a few seconds to give the quarterback time to, to take a step back. The illegal block in the back is called against the Crusaders. So uh, that'll take them back. That'll push them back quite One, a ways. 136 left in the half, more importantly here. That'll be taken from the spot of the foul, I believe. And that spot is right around the 20-yard line. They were at the 32-yard line. So they're going to have the ball at the 10-yard line. It's going to be second down and a long way. 10, 20, boy, close to 30 yards, maybe over 30 yards. I would suspect at this point Holy Cross is just going to try to run the ball and run that clock and get out of get out of uh, half, first half seven to seven because they're in terrible field position right now. Although last time they were here, they uh, threw it deep and 82 yards later, it was a touchdown on first down. Trap play up the middle, nothing doing. Tailback uh, gains about a yard on the play. Nice job by the front seven of Allman as Somebody take a timeout. Yep, Pioneers take a timeout. Let's take a 30 second timeout. We'll come back with the rest of the first half. Allman 7, Holy Cross 7. It's Pioneer football here on AM 1270 WKBF. Uh, you know, before before that uh, clip penalty, was just trying to hopefully run that clock and get out at 7 7 with a big clipping penalty. And Holy Cross backed up near their own end zone. Allman calls timeout now, thinking, hey, we might be able to get this football back before half and, and maybe at least put three points on the board. And the Pioneers. <clears throat> They're in a prevent uh, defense here. Have one timeout left. And the pass goes to Wolf. And Wolf in and out of his hands. Uh, Ebner was there to make the tackle. And Wolf is down hurt on the play. Ebner caught him good right in the midsection. Might have knocked the wind out of him. The referees will call for the trainer for. Uh, Holy Cross to come over as Wolf will uh, take his helmet off and uh, he's got to come out uh, since the trainer came on. He'll think twice again about reaching up for that ball with that little Ebner coming up and smacking yeah. right in the ribs like that. Matt Ebner is uh, quite an athlete. A great baseball player, good basketball player. As Wolf will have to come off for at least one play. It'll be third down in 30 
for Holy Cross. And if Allman can make a stop and take a timeout, they could probably get the ball back in pretty good field position. And Holy Cross has not been a good punting team. Uh, they've tried it twice. The first one got blocked. The second one uh, was a bad snap, but uh, there wasn't any rush on, so the punter had time to get it off. It wasn't a great kick. Best thing about this play here was it stopped the clock throwing the ball. So there's one minute and 11 seconds left in the half. Third down. Third and uh, 30 from the 12, 111 to play. Offs or uh, okay. penalty flags yep. on the play. They're coming out. Uh, they were going uh, flankers, or excuse me, it looked like a pro right flanker to the right side. He lined up five yards yeah, he did. off sides and uh, yeah, he did. threw the penalty. Just a case of not knowing where the ball was, and that'll move him back five more yards to the seven yard line where it'll be third and 35. Holland's best offense right now is Holy Cross's offense. They keep backing up. As Holy Cross will take a timeout. We'll keep it right here and uh, recognize rule, rule and rule agent Dan DePorter. Give Dan a call or check him out on the rep on the, his uh, website. Uh, Dan has got some great listings going on right now. Uh, give him a call and ask him about some of the hunting properties that he has, this being hunting season, or we're, we're heading into hunting season here. Dan, Dan's an almond grad, uh, 1974 grad, and he's a great guy. I think the coach called timeout, but he spent most of the time uh, talking to the officials here, so offensively, I think they're still looking for a play call. That, does, that doesn't do much for the morale of your, of your team either when uh, you know, your things are going backwards for you and uh, yep. rather than going out there and pepping them up and uh, hopefully you know, trying to get the, the wheels back on the wagon, uh, you spend your time chewing on the officials. Well, the referee just threw another flag against the river or the uh, Holy Cross backfield. That's going to take them back half the distance to the goal line. That's the third penalty call against the coaches of, of Holy Cross. Well, and the warning, I think one more. He'd probably be going to the locker room himself here, the head coach now. I, if that is one the head more. coach who's in the white sweatshirt. It, it doesn't matter. If it's on the bench, it goes to the head coach. Is that right? Hmm. Well, on the sideline, it goes to the head coach. Third and 39 from the three yard line. They've got to get it to the 42 yard line. Allman in a 4-3 defense here, prevent. Holy Cross will run it with the tailback. He's gonna have a gain of just a couple of yards on the play. Allman will use its last timeout in a hurry. It'll stop the clock with a 103 to play. In the half, another, of, flag. Oh, another flag. And who is this gonna go against? A lot of green jerseys around, only one white. And it's, it's real important right now that uh, you know, Coach E. Jager talked to that Allman team. Holy Cross is having some problems, and that is, hey, keep your mouth shut, play the game, and let them feel the frustrations. Don't get involved in it. Ooh, and if uh, this would be a personal foul against Allman, uh, if it would be, would this be a first down for Holy Cross? I think it's probably still here on Holy Cross. Timeout taken by Allman. No, uh, no signal about the penalty flag as the referee will step forward. Dead ball. But uh, personal no. foul, I guess. Oh, uh, offsetting. Two personal offsetting. fouls. One against the offense. One against the defense. Okay, so, so that no doesn't matter. Nothing hurt there. But but once again, you know, if if, if you're Almond and you're talking to your players, you're saying, hey, they're they're falling apart right here. Don't don't bring them back in the game by by us making uh, silly mistakes as well. Well, something smells good up here. As, thanks, uh, thanks, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> as uh, looks like uh, rain begins to fall again. Umbrellas out. Balls on the five yard line. Uh, they began on about 31. They're back to the five, so they lost quite a bit of yards there. And they'll have to punt with Allman getting the ball back here with a minute and three to go. Similar situation happened in the Allman Moline game. Moline had called timeout in uh, not great field position. Allman got the ball and was able to score right before half, and that was a big momentum swing for Allman in that game. And for the most part this year, Allman's scores have been close in the first half, and something happens uh, at the end of the half and beginning of the third quarter, and they're able to rally off two or three touchdowns in a row. We'll see if that is the case tonight. Punting deep in his own end zone. Oh, about nine yards deep, I believe, is DeBauer. He's at the back of the end zone. And back at the 45-yard line is Ebner and Hauer. Looks like Allman's trying to get a return. As Allman, the Bowers punt almost blocked on the play by Just. As they'll let it hit the ground, Ebner will have it. 40. Across the 35 to the 30, still on his feet, down to the 27 yard line. No penalty flags on the play. Allman, great field position. They got 51 seconds to work with, no timeouts at the Holy Cross 
27-yard line. Well, and this, you know, no timeouts left. That kind of hurts because uh, you're, you're limited to do what you're limited in uh, your running selection. Each week you should, you know, most coaches and uh, practice this just a, you know, two-minute type drill. What we're going to do, work the sidelines and uh, mix up the passing play and even a run play if we need to. But uh, and, and lightning or kill the ball if you would do that. But it'll be interesting to see how effective Allman can be here in, in a short time. On first and ten, double wing set formation. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage intended for Bellhouse, McGinnis's pass. Bellhouse out of the backfield running yeah. for the sideline, so if he would catch it, he'd be along the sideline and be able to step out of bounds and stop the clock when he needed to. Second down and 10, 48 seconds to play in the first half. Allman at the 27 yard line of Holy Cross. Plenty of time on the board here. Double wing set formation, Ebner and Crosser both split out to opposite ends. They're going to run the option. McGinnis will elect to keep it as he'll gain about four or five yards on the play. Allman's going to have to get up. Hustle back to the line. Hurry. They got time though. 38. Here's, here's the advantage of going no huddle also as they can get lined right back up and go at it. Uh, that last formation they were double slot, spread them out and tried to run the ball. Third down and four we'll call it. 25 seconds. Slant pass. Same play for right. first down. Completed to Bellhouse. Out of Bellhouse bounds. out of bounds. Great effort. Yep. Real good. Once again, the, the slot formation. The split end runs the slant route, taking the defender with him, and the halfback comes out of the backfield, running straight for the sideline. Nice pass. Nice play. And uh, Bellhouse was the guy in the backfield. I thought uh, McGinnis was going to cross her on the slant. Uh, he made a better decision than I did, going for uh, the player that was heading to the sideline. That'll stop the clock with 19 seconds to play in the first half. 7-7 seven to seven the score, Alleman looking for more. They've spent an awful lot of time inside the 30-yard line of Holy Cross. They've, they've fumbled twice and have a missed field goal. Little, little tighter field goals here. I'm sure they'd like to keep the ball in the middle of the field, but I'm sure they want to try to get a little closer as well. McGinnis on the option inside the 10. Oh, Not penalty flag. flags on the play by the side judge, and this one will probably be coming back. More times than not when you're running the option, that's on your split end out there, stalk block and the defensive back, trying to keep them away from your quarterback. Not an easy block to uh, to maneuver. The call will go against Allman. It's going to move him back. Clock will stop with 15 seconds to play. That was a play they needed right there. Put him on the 10 yard line and within, uh, I'm sure, field goal range. Yeah. And uh, Tony Bignano does not have uh, the strongest leg in the world. His range probably is good 35 yards and in. 15 seconds back on the on the clock here. We'll mark off 10 yards. Put it on the hash at the 21 yard line. It'll be first down. About 15. First and 15 for the Pioneers. More importantly at this point in the game though, you've got uh, the 15 seconds left on the clock. Allman coming out with uh, slots to both sides. Two split ends, two, two halfback. Bellhouse will start in motion. Back to pass is McGinnis. A lot of time, a lot of running room. He's going to take off with it, and uh, Alleman is probably not going to get another playoff. As uh, three, two, one, no. Half ends with the ball at the 20-yard line, the, as McGinnis would have been better off just to chuck it into the sideline. Uh, so the half will... Uh, Start tied at seven. Alleman, though, has had its chances, and they easily could have had three or four touchdowns on the scoreboard. Two fumbles, one missed field goal, and a possession ends at half with no timeouts. Alleman seven, Holy Cross seven. Both teams will head to the Carver Center, the warm confines of the locker room space there and the beautiful PE Center. And, Dan, you're... Uh, your initial thoughts of the first half? Well, I think Allman has to feel real well. Uh, certainly, they don't, they're not happy with the score being 7-7. Seven seven, uh, as you stated, they had some other opportunities. but they're We are now ready for the start of the third quarter. We'll put a fresh 12 minutes on the clock. Ball spotted in the middle of the field by Matt Ebner. He'll be squigging, swibbing the kick down the field. This game tied at 7, but Allman certainly has done a good job against Holy Cross. This one's going to be caught in midair, and it's bobbled and dropped, and uh, the receiver is just going to fall on it. He had a great opportunity to return the ball, hit him about the 33, 
lost the handle on it and it fell to the ground and he did the smart thing just falling on it rather than trying to pick it up and run so I'm sure you know that's that's being coachable right there. That's number 12. Uh, Tom Miller has for Riverside Brookfield will have or uh, I, I want to say Riverside Holy Brookfield Cross. now. Holy <laughs> Cross will have it first uh, and 10 from their own 34 33 yard line. They really lie. really they should have had a flag there. They had 12 guys in the huddle. Uh, High formation. Musha will hand it off to the tailback up the middle. A little bit of running room as uh, still right on his feet. Well, he was a load there. And, you know, seeing that type of a run, you're wondering why they haven't gone to more of that here the, the first half. But uh, they came out, they're fired up, and it's up to Allman right now to, to shut that down. As uh, that's one of very few positive uh, running plays we've seen by Holy Cross as the referees go over. And uh, I think they missed that 12 guy in the huddle. Yep, he ran call. right past the official. As uh, uh, high pro left, flanker left, split to the right. Basic 5-2 defense by the Pioneers as uh, that first carry went for a first down for Holy Cross. Musha under center. He'll turn around on the counter tree, give it to the tailback. He's going to be stood up near the line of scrimmage. Actually, that looks just like a, a lead. Fullback led through, off guard for the for the tailback. A little different look. Uh, like you said, we've seen counter tree a lot. This time, uh, no misdirection there. They, they're just trying to go right at all of them. They do a lot of pulling. A lot of trapping and a lot of counters. Second down and nine from the 44, 11 15 to play in the third quarter. Our score, Alleman seven, Holy Cross seven. Twin receivers split out to the near side, a single receiver to the far side. I formation in the backfield, no tight end. Musha under center. 5 2 defense applied by the Pioneers. As to bootleg, he's looking long for Stevens. And he goes into the flat. It's dropped again by number 19. That is Mike McMillian, I believe, his third drop of the night. Backside end, dragging across the middle of the field. Alma did a good job. This time, instead of being level coverage, they did bring their strong safety up to cover that twins man so he's not wide open for the quick pops. Did a great job covering, but then the, the, the backside split in, dragging across the middle of the field, ended up being open. Third down and nine. The Pioneers will bring out Ori Peterson. They'll go with four down linemen. High twins left, split to the right side. Third and nine, high formation in the backfield. Allman in a prevent 4-2 defense. Musha, a deep drop back, looking downfield. It's going to be almost picked off on the play by Nate Just. Incomplete, intended for Stevens. So it'll be fourth down and nine as uh, Holy Cross got a first down on a first down play. But then they go three and out as the Pioneers hold on two straight pass plays that if completed would have been good for first downs as Ebner and Hauer back deep at the 20 yard line as uh, number 88 in the punt for Holy Cross Pat DeBauer. He'll punt it from his own 30 yard line as uh, we've they punted a couple times tonight. One got blocked, which set up the first Alleman touchdown. A bad, uh, bad uh, no. snap or, yep. or a dribble, ball. A dribbled snap. Uh, but the uh, Bauer still got it off. It wasn't a great punt, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Alleman will stay in uh, pretty much a punt safe defense as DeBauer, bad, oh, oh. bad drop, oh. and it's uh, a, a bad kick, but it's going to be bounced down and died at about the 35 yard line of the Pioneers. I'll tell you that that possibly is your worst nightmare. Whenever you go over punt your punt team on uh, on on the practice, you put that fullback up in front of the punter, and you tell them you never step backwards right. because you've got that foot of the of the punter going forward right in that direction. Well, that's a good thing. Allman pushed their fullback, their up back, right into the punter. Fortunate, unfortunately, you know, he was able to get that ball off. On first down, Allman wishbone. will line up in a wishbone set. Receiver to the right side of the formation, McGinnis to Bellhouse. Bellhouse, about four yards of running room. He's going to be stopped shy of the 40 yard line. It's going to be third or uh, second down in about six for the Pioneers. The score is tied, seven to seven. Holy Cross got on the scoreboard first with an 82 yard touchdown reception by Bobby Stevens. Near the end of the first quarter, Alleman at around the eight-minute mark of the second quarter after a blocked punt, uh, got the ball back right around the 15-yard line and took it in for a touchdown. As Coming back out in the wishbone, split split to the right side, trying to power it right back at Holy Cross. McGinnis will hand it off on the counter to, to uh, uh, Bauer. 
to Barlow. I mean, Barlow has a lot of running room, a good 12-yard gain to be a first down for the Pioneers as uh, Barlow, not a whole lot of carries tonight. Most of the carries have either been Bellhouse or just, but uh, he'll get the call on the counter play. And First play they came out, all three backs through the same hole, 56 blasts off the right tackle. Faked that same play coming back second down, but this time it was a 23 cross. Fake to the fullback to the right side, both halfbacks going left for a first down. On set, first down and 10, Bellhouse sneaks through a hole in the line over right tackle, and he'll be taken down right around the 45-yard line. He'll have a gain of about six or seven yards on the play. It'll be second down in two or three actually three or four for the Pioneers. Going back to the bread and butter, the first first half, they ran the 46 belly or, or halfback belly, outside belly, faking the fullback inside. Big yards there. Second down and five from the 45, 919 to play in the third quarter. Our score, seven to seven, Bellhouse will line up in a wing. Slot Broken left. bone formation in the backfield. May just on the carry, bounces it outside across the 40 yard line, it'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers brought down near the 37 yard line for the senior fullback. Does a great job keeping his feet moved, but the thing that's really impressive to watch the offensive line for Allman, you see a lot of green jerseys upfield blocking for him as he continues to run. They're not taking one step blocking and then watching the ball carrier run. They stay involved in the play and keep the feet going. On first down, we'll see what the Pioneers elect to do. Nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Seven to seven the score. Wishbone set in the backfield. They'll run Bellhouse. 56 blast again off the three backs going off tackle to the right side. We've got a flag on the play. As I'm not sure where the flag came from. Would be second and five. And it's going to be a uh, block in the back or a holding holding call against the Pioneers. So that'll uh, move them back a little bit. And this is not the uh, not an offense where you want to be taking steps backward being uh, the uh, running attack that Allman uses. It'll be first down or second down. Let's see if they change the marker. No, it'll be first down and a good 16 yards for the Pioneers. They've tried, I believe, two passes up to this point as the official will blow the play clock to start. Staying in the wishbone split to the left side. Klingeman at tight end, the right side of the formation. Simple cut up the middle. Bellhouse. That's a back some of those yards. It'll be second down and 10 for the Pioneers. Great quick hitter. Just quarterback reversing out, faking the fullback. Really no fake. Just uh, appears that way and then uh, hands the ball off to the halfback. Runs straight up the gut on the left side. <clears throat> It'll be second down and 10 at the 37-yard line of Holy Cross. Eight minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Our score. Allman seven, Holy Cross seven. Wishbone set in the backfield, second down. Bellhouse on the counter. A little bit of running room. He's gonna cross the 35 yard line to the 34. It's gonna be third down and about seven for the Pioneers. Allman gets off the ball real well. They're just snapping that ball and going after him. Uh, once again, ran some misdirection here. Mark Grenier will check out of the ball game. His replacement, big number 74, John Moore. Moore, a junior tackle. Big third down and seven here. His Grenier looks like uh, he needs some tape on his hand or wrist. Slot left. On third down, McGinnis on the option to the 30, to the 20, still on his feet as he crosses into the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Big play. Ball will be spotted at the 16-yard line of Holy Cross. 15 read, just off left tackle. Defense Vince steps down. And exactly what they want. McGinnis hangs on the ball and turns it up the field. He is so quick at accelerating, making that read. Once he makes the read, he's gone. It'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers from the 16. 720 to play in the third quarter. Tie ball game. 7-7. Seven, seven. That's where we were at at halftime. Split left wishbone. Once again, all three backs going off, off tackle to the left side. Barlow over left tackle, down to the 10-yard line, moving the pile as Nate just a little slow to get up as uh, he might have hurt his uh, left arm. He'll shake it off and walk back, not to the huddle because the Pioneers don't use a huddle. Second down and two will be the down in distance inside of the 10 yard line at the nine. They're being patient. They're just going right at him with what they do best. McGinnis under center out of the wishbone. They're gonna blow this play dead. I think that's, that that's uh, they had a lineman move. 
Yep, coming back once again with the 56 blaster, all three backs going off tackle, and it was there. I think uh, yeah, one of the uh, linemen moved for the Pioneers might have been Kyle Dupre. And Kyle, thanks you for saying that. Yep. <laughs> as long as it's not the other guard, because uh, distant cousin to Scotty Burke. Scotty was once, his aunt was once married to my older brother. I got to see Scotty grow up. It's a pleasure here being here to watch him play. Yeah, they say if you're around long enough, sooner or later there's an athlete that comes along in the family. That's right. McGinnis hands it off to Just over inside the 10 yard line. And uh, Just will pick up a lot of those yards back from the penalty. It's going to be third down and two for Alleman. He's working hard, boy. He's getting those shoulders down, those legs are, are uh, pounding away. It's like the rain is uh, stopped. So again, they're back to a big third down situation here. And Holy Cross has had the ball to start off with, got a first down, and had to punt it on three downs to the Pioneers. And Alleman has had the ball back since, about the nine minute mark. So it's a nice four minute drive for the Pioneers on third and two. Bellhouse. 46 belly. First down inside of the five yard line, down to the three. As uh, a loud bang from a top. Um, I'm going to guess that's Holy Cross. His coach is uh, not happy with the defensive line, but the Pioneers will have it first and goal inside the five at the four yard line. Another long drive by the Pioneers. This time they need to come out with some points. That was 46 belly. Once again, nothing fancy. Just going right at him, faking full back inside. Halfbacks off the right tackle. Split left and ace or double wing formation. McGinnis under center on first and goal. He'll give it to Just. Just pounds his way toward the goal line. Into the end zone, touchdown. Nate Just from four yards out. I'll tell you, the offensive line for Allman is really starting to move those white jerseys backwards. They're getting off the ball so quick. Allman's backfield is explosive right off the ball, and they're doing a great job. 5-19 to play in the third quarter. Tony Bognano will be on to try the all important point after attempt. Nate Just, a four yard plunge up the middle. And that was all Nate Just. Tony waiting for the snap. There it is, it's a good one. They'll put the ball down. It's going to be no good off the upright. And he didn't hit that thing at all. I, a little mix up on the extra point there as uh, Alleman will just lead 13 to 7. No extra point. Let's pause. We'll take a timeout. It's Pioneer football here on WKBF. <laughs> takes the lead 13 to 7 extra point by Bagnano off the right upright as Ebner's kicks a tough one it's going to go out of bounds though near the 20 yard line so uh, Holy Cross will start first and 10 from their own 35. All them in 13 Holy Cross 7 Holy Cross will get the ball for the second time this half the uh, first time they uh, took the opening uh, second half kickoff and Got a first down on uh, the first play, a 10-yard run, and then after that went three and out and punted it back for Alleman. Alleman had the ball for almost five minutes on offense. Took it down, and Nate Just scored on a four-yard touchdown run. Extra point by Bagnano was off the upright. And uh, he kind of hesitated on the kick and didn't really fully hit it. We're in a nice slot right, split to the left side. Now we're going a quick pitch to the right side, 78 pitch. A pitch to the tailback on the play. Up to the 40-yard line, that is number 33, Adrian Padilla. 
They're mixing it up here, trying different things, trying to get something going. Almond's best defense right now has been their offense, doing a great job eating up the clock and, and long drives. A good thing for them is they were able to come away with some points on this last drive. Second down and four from the 40 for Holy Cross. 4.52 to play in the third quarter. Almond 13. Holy Cross seven. Winner will play Riverside Brookfield next weekend in the second round of the playoffs. High pro left, flanker to left, split to the right. On second down, they'll run counter a, a counter play as Padilla will have uh, probably enough for a first down. Back yeah. to that counter tray that they they uh, tried to hammer home uh, in the, early in the in the game and got away from it. Yep. They're trying to get back to it now. You know, Holy Cross really has not run very many plays. Uh, you know, we're almost uh, through three quarters, and uh, I'm going to guess. You know, I'm not keeping stats up here. I, I don't do that when I call games, but I'm going to guess that Allman is. Uh, the number of plays they run is probably double. Well, they're trying to make something happen here. There are trips to the right side now, split to the left. On first down, four receivers set with a fullback in the backfield. A screen pass is going to be dropped on the play by Drew Williams. We've had about five drops tonight for Holy Cross. And a uh, little slip screen there. The uh, two inside receivers straight up the field. Split end comes that back up underneath them trying to get the ball. Once again, you've seen that happen quite a bit tonight. Ball's there, and they're, they're dropping the football. On second down and 10, quarterback uh, Matt Musha. Still in the ball game. Ryan Newman, the uh, other quarterback who has started some games for Holy Cross, has only taken two snaps from center in the game. On second down and 10, they'll go with a three receiver set. I formation in the backfield. Ball spotted at the 46 yard line for Holy Cross. They'll send a guy in motion. That's DeBauer. They'll run it to Padilla, and he will have a gain of about a yard. Lead off the left, left guard for about a yard. It'll be third down and. Seven four. Holy Cross. We'll see if the Pioneer defense can hold once again. First time now they've come out. They came out in twins to the left side. Came motion with that left halfback across the formation. Allman did the right job and adjusted to it. Uh, once again, I think they're just trying to check, trying to find something that'll work against the Pioneers. They're in double double twins at this formation shotgun. Four down linemen for the Pioneers as the rain comes down. Musha deep drop back into the flat, completed on the play near the 39-yard line as Nate Justice couldn't quite catch up with, with Jason Hess, a senior wide receiver, 6'2", 185. It'll be first down as now the rain is really starting to come down. The umbrellas are all popping up. Uh, this is by far the hardest that it has rained today. Once again, you know, that, that works in the receiver's favor and the fact that he knows what the route he's running. The question is, can the quarterback get the ball off and, and the receiver pull it down? 3.20 to play in the third quarter. All of them in 13, Holy Cross 7. Twins to the short side, right side of the field, split to the left. I formation in the backfield on first down. Handoff Lead. to uh, Lyon up the middle. Not much going on. He'll gain about a yard on the play. Grenier in on the tackle along with Ori Peterson. Lead off left guard. They ran that earlier for a yard, and that's what they gained on this play as well. So they've got a little bit of a drive going here themselves. Uh, Ada with that big pass play. Uh, I think they're relying quite a bit more on, on big plays than the Pioneers have to uh, with their long drives. On second down in nine. I slot left, split right. They'll go with a quick pitch to Lyon. Lyon is going to string it out to the sideline. He's going to be taken down for about a three-yard gain. Clock's running. Clock will run. It's going to be third down and about five for the Crusaders. Heavy rainfall. 13 to seven, our score. Allman on top of Holy Cross, but this is uh, one of Holy Cross's better drives of the game. Their uh, lone touchdown came on an 82-yard pass reception back in uh, near the end of the first quarter. So this is big third down here. Allman had some yep. big third downs on their, their, their scoring drive, and now it's time for Holy Cross to put up if they need to do it here. On big third down. Third and five, they'll send Twins Williams in motion. Formation. I formation in the backfield. Musha back to pass, looking down the field. Completed on the play near the 27-yard line. Good enough for a first down to number 20, or number 19, I believe, Mike McMillian. Once again, they came out twins right, split left, put the brought the right half back across the formation, and uh, just hit a quick hitch out on the left side, enough for a first down. First and 10 for Holy Cross as they are finding some success in the passing game. At the 27 of Allman on the far hash, 
two receiver set. I formation in the backfield. Level coverage for Deep uh, Almond. First and ten. Musha back to pass on the slant pass. Incomplete. Looking for Stevens. Matt Ebner there to break it up as uh, you know, Stevens doesn't really run that route very hard. It's almost like he's expecting to get hit and he's kind of tensing up. Well, a lot of those great receivers don't run them real hard. They just find the void, you know. Uh, I've seen a lot of slow receivers be become great, great receivers. Just the fact they can find the open area and the quarterback finds them. Second down and 10, clock stopped with 147 in the third quarter. Got eye pro left, which means flanker to left side, split to the right. 5-2 defense for the Pioneers on counter second and long. Lyon on the counter. He's going to reach the sideline. He'll stay in bounds. He'll be brought down near the 22-23 yard line. It'll be third down and about five or six for the Crusaders. And uh, you know we haven't really mentioned that they got some size. There's some beef on that offensive line, and it uh, and that's what Allman's going to be up against against any team they play here in the playoffs, being in, in Class 5A. And Allman's got got some quickness on their offense and defensive line. Third down, they'll split receivers to opposite ends. A slot at the right side, eye, offset eye formation. They go with a click pitch to Lion. Lion stood up near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down. And five, Great. and what will the Crusaders do? I think they're going to go for it. Great play by Joe Tabor. He stepped up and took it on right there. Joey Tabor, he's got a brother that uh, was in my class at Alderman. He actually married a girl that uh, lives over in the Far East, and he lives over there. Well, they're going to have to send him a, got a flag here. I think official on the sideline uh, stepped out on the field. As they're, they're watching that real close on both sides. Yep, they are, and I uh, believe dead ball. That's a warning. A warning would go against Alleman. The good thing is not being assessed at this point. As Coach Jager and DePorter and Marks got to keep their distance. Yeah, you'd have a problem with these reps. Because <laughs> you, you spend all the time right near the uh, uh, they'd have right near the numbers. They'd have a problem with me. Yeah, that's all right. Twins right, tight into the left side, eye formation. Allman Justin. Fourth down and five. They'll run a pass. Musha back deep, looking incomplete. Allman will take over on downs. No flags. And the pass was intended for number 43. That is Dan Looper, one of the linebackers. Trying to hit, the, trying Looper, to hit the fullback out of the backfield. Yep, Looper in the flat. Uh, the pass just uh, led him a little bit too far. It would have been good for a first down near the 15-yard line, and it would have kept the drive alive for Holy Cross, by far their best drive of the evening, as that started at the 35 after uh, the kickoff goes out of bounds. They drive it down to the Allman 22-yard line. Eat up about five minutes off the clock. we got 26 seconds to play in the third quarter. Allman owns a 13 to seven lead. Allman go with the broken bone formation. Bellhouse Split wing right, back. Wing left. They'll give it to the second back through. 45 and, uh, belly. Belly over left tackle. And that is uh, Robert Barlow. Barlow stumbles ahead for a gain. Nice gain on first down of about five yards. It's gonna be second down of five for the Pioneers. That will do it for the third quarter. Allman jumps ahead with a touchdown. Extra point, no good off of the upright. So Alleman owns a 13 to seven lead going into the fourth quarter. We'll pause, we'll take a timeout. We'll come back with the fourth quarter. It's Pioneer football here on AM 1270 WKBF. Second down, Hank Bellhouse through the middle, a big gainer for the Pioneers into Holy Cross territory. From the 27 all the way to the 47, a 30 yard gainer on second down and five. Pioneers, the ball in Holy Cross territory. First and 10, rain still coming down. Start of the fourth quarter, all of them in 13, Holy Cross seven. Battle field position, that gets Allman out of the, out of the hole and back to midfield here. Big play. Crosser will split out to the near side. Slot They'll right. go with uh, a broken bone formation in the backfield. Handoff will go to Just up the middle. He'll hang on to the ball as he fights for about a two-yard gain. It'll be second down and eight for the Pioneers. Clock running 11-20 to play in the football game. 13-7 to the score. All of it on top. They got a touchdown midway through the third quarter. Extra point was no good. 
and they held on a fourth and five at their own 20 yard line. And then Bellhouse comes back with an awful big run to start the fourth quarter. Uh, the Pioneers will have it second and eight from the 47 yard line. Again, you can see this game sometime this week on Channel 19, Mediacom Cable Channel 19. Jess Medina and the crew are here working diligently through the rain. Up the middle, Barlow across the 35. Yeah, the wish to the 41-yard line. Wishbone and split to the right side, ran uh, the 45 belly or belly outside, and just once again, just going right at him, pounding him, and having success doing it. Third down, and it's going to be third and three at the 41 for the Pioneers. Ten and a half to play in the ball game. They'll await the call from Mike Ebner. Once again, another big third down situation. Keep the live uh, drive going here. Tony Crosser will split out to the near side. Wishbone formation in the backfield. Barlow, Bellhouse, and Just, the workhorses. Bellhouse first down for the Pioneers to the 35-yard line. Boy, by the way it looks, you, you would think Holy Cross had seven guys playing both ways. Yeah. Because right now they're slow getting up off the field. Almost just getting off the ball and getting into them. And it, it's evident here on the line of scrimmage. Like a little shock might be setting in. Again, these suburb teams expect to come to the Quad Cities and, and really put a put a wallop on them, but uh, sometimes it doesn't happen like that. As the Pioneers set for first down, first and 10 from the 35 ball in the middle of the field between the hashes. Uh, wishbone set in the backfield. to go on the counter to, to uh, number 40, uh, Barlow. Back Barlow gets a gain of about four yards, and uh, it'll be second down and six for the Pioneers. Once again, cross action in the backfield, pounding the fullback, all backs going the same hole. Now you come back with some misdirections, holding those linebackers. Second down and six from the 35, 9.30 to play in the football game. All them in 13, Holy Cross seven. Pioneers on the move at the Holy Cross 31. They'll go with Bellhouse, a simple lead over right tackle. Bellhouse fumbles the football. Oh. No, he's down. Referee saying he's down. But Holy Cross players uh, don't think so. Is now uh, we got to watch out for the coaches over there. I know all the all the Almond coaches right now are saying, "Hey, hang on to the football because that's the only thing that's going to stop this drive at this point because they're just pounding Holy Cross." And Bellhouse has been good all year with keeping two hands on the ball. Is we're third and less than one here. Another yes. third down. Because of the weather, uh, referees are going to exchange footballs. And of course, the referee uh, drops the football. So, <laughs> third down and short. Third and less than a yard from the 26. A big down for the Pioneers. Broken bone. Bellhouse at wing. Handoff goes to Just. Just. I don't think he got it. Well, uh, it'll depend on the mark. Yeah, he's going to be a little short. Once they, once again, they were uh, split right wing to left side. Just went simple 13 give to the fullback up the gut. Yep. And uh, there was penetration in the backfield. Somebody shot a gap and got a, got a hand on his jersey. Just just did a good job twisting and turning just Fourth to get back down. to the original line of scrimmage. Fourth down for the Pioneers. They will go for it. Fourth and a yard. As McGinnis tells Tony Crosser what to do, turns around, tells the trio of the backfield what to do. They'll go wishbone set, tight line splits for the Pioneers. He'll go with the sneak. He's got the first down. He needed to get across the 35-yard line. And he is there, although for some reason Holy Cross thinks that they stopped him. They stopped him the first time, and then he spun out yep. and got the first down. That's a that's a good lesson for any any football player. Keep those feet going and, and twisting and turning, and that's what got the first down. They had 11 players within one yard line of scrimmage on that play and not able to stop him. And that's the type of play you tell your team, hey, if we can't get inches, we don't deserve to win a ball game. Allman came out and did it. Give credit to the bookend tackles, Ori Peterson and Mark Grenier. Uh, Grenier. Well, uh, actually, Matt Grenier, Mark is his brother. Uh, Matt will check back into the lineup as McGinnis changing the play at the line of scrimmage on first and 10 from the 25 for the Pioneers. He'll give it to Just, a lot of running room, get a nice five-yard gain on first down, down to the 20-yard line. Important thing, though, Dan McGuire, clock running. Seven and a half to play in the game, and the Pioneers have the lead by six. And I think they feel very comfortable right now as well. The scoreboard is not, uh, not a big difference, but right now I think Allman's in control of the game. Winner of this game will move on to the second round of the Class 5A playoffs on the road against Riverside Brookfield. Riverside Brookfield came from behind in the fourth quarter with eight minutes to go, putting up two touchdowns and uh, two touchdowns to, to win the game 31-30 over Geneseo, shocking the Maple Leafs. 
Second down and six from the 20 for the Pioneers. Wishbone set with a receiver. Bellhouse, two arms on the ball. He will spin his way down near the first down marker. He needs to get down past the 15-yard line. Just and a little shot. will probably be marked right at the 15, so it's going to be third down and real short as uh, Robert Barlow sets in some great things from the Pioneers. Barlow, Bellhouse, and Just and McGinnis, the four workhorse backs for the Pioneers. Third and short, we'll see what the Pioneers elect to do. Last time it was the quarterback sneak, and McGinnis will turn around, hand it off to Bellhouse. Bellhouse, first down, crosses the 15-yard line down to the 12-yard line. That was a great play call right there. I don't know if he audible line of scrimmage, just with his numbers or not, but they were in a double eagle. They brought both tackles down over the guards, and Allman runs off tackle. Uh, right where, where they don't have the lineman. That's the simplest play in football, run where they ain't, which is bad English, but uh, that's basically what you want to do. It's find, find the bubble where they're, where they're soft on the defensive line and go at them. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Running behind that line, Dupre, Grenier, Berg, Appleman, Peterson, and Klingeman at tight end. On the counter. Barlow down to the six yard line, twisting and turning. Tell you, the Holy Cross players are too busy talking to the officials yeah. on every down on, on what's going on here rather than playing football. And as I stated earlier, you know, I think the coach sort of brings that upon them a little bit too. More concerned about the officials than, than calling the ball game. And Allman backs are running hard. Once again, they just need to keep two hands on the ball because the only thing that's going to stop them would be a turnover. Second down from the Six yard line, second and four, clock running, five and a half to play in the game. Allman owns a six point lead, looking for more. Bellhouse to the one, almost into the end zone. There was a nice hole, he was held up on the play. He's putting his shoulders down and just pounding people. Tackled by Anthony Lupo, the linebacker for Holy Cross, but it's gonna be first down First in goal, I believe some buses. I bet that's Augustana coming back from their game at uh, Elmhurst. But it's going to be first in goal from the one inside the one. And I'm going to, well, they need to do something here. Well, if, if, uh, if similar to the fourth down, they're going to have 11 guys within that uh, one yard line. As McGinnis under center, he'll hand it off to Just. Just into the end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. No flags. Nate Justice, third touchdown of the night. A two-yarder, a four-yarder, and now a one-yarder. Some high-fiving going out there. I think they feel real comfortable, as we stated earlier in this ballgame. The offensive line's doing the job. The backs are running hard. 4.56 to play in the ballgame. Will Alleman go for two? It looks like they will. To get it back to a 14-point lead, it is now 19 to seven. Tony Bognano hit the upright on his second extra point attempt of the evening. Gonna be in a slot right. Broken bone formation. McGinnis on the option. McGinnis into the end zone for two. 18 option with the keep to the slot side. So let's pause. We'll take a timeout here in the fourth quarter. 4.56 to play. Don't go anywhere. All of them in 21, Holy Cross seven. It's Pioneer football here on WKBF. We got 4.56 to play in the ball game. The Pioneers go ahead by 14, 21 to seven in this opening round, class 5A playoff game between Holy Cross and Allman. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Pete Ivanek, along with Dan McGuire and Mike Coquit and Ethan McGuire up here in the press box. Ethan, thanks for going on that uh, halftime run. That pork chop was excellent. Pork chop rivals East Moline's pork chops. Ebner's squib kick is taken by an up man near the 40 yard line. They're going to have, uh, Holy Cross is going to have field position right at the 43 yard line. But if you're Allman, uh, that's okay. They're not going to give up a big play on it. Well, you know, they're a very disciplined team, and that goes, uh, you know, way, way Davey Jager and uh, Todd DePorter and his, his coaching staff, uh, you know, they, they, they preach discipline, and it, it's evident uh, by the way they've been able to hold their composure as well as run their plays. So it'll be first and 10 for the Crusaders. They need a touchdown, and they need a touchdown in a hurry. The ball will be spotted at their own 44-yard line, 4.52 to play in the ballgame. 21 for Allman, just seven for Holy Cross. Shotgun twins to both sides. 
And this is what the Pioneers uh, might see against Riverside Brookfield should they get there next week. Pass completed to Stevens wide open at the 40. He's going to backtrack his way to the 45. Now he's going to go back to the 47 yard line. He's going to turn the corner. He's going to be tackled out of bounds near the 34 yard line. He's an athlete. I'll tell you, he caught the ball and ran backwards. 11 yards running from one sideline to the other sideline looking for an opening. Allman did a good job stretching him out and staying with him and making the play. And he's still got positive yardage out of yeah. The difference here right now is when uh, Holy Cross is throwing the ball, the quarterback's having more time to throw it than he did the first half. So first and 10 for Holy Cross. Ball at the 39 yard line. Clock is stopped with 439 to play in the football game. Once again, explosive offense, uh, shotgun twins to both sides. First and 10. Musha in shotgun, he'll deep drop back. He's gonna be hit hard on the play. It's gonna be completed to Stevens near the 20 yard line. They like Stevens, they motion him across into a trips formation from the double twins. So two plays and uh, they're already inside of the Allman 20 yard line near the 18, 432 to play in the guy in the game clock stop. It'll be first and 10 for the Crusaders. Allman can't panic here and stuff. I mean, they're having some success right now throwing the ball. You're up by two scores. Yeah, you want the clock to run, but likewise, you know, you've got to come up with a big play here at some point. Twins again, shotgun. First and 10 from the 18 of Alleman Crusaders. Fumble the snap, Lucia picks it up. It's gonna be a broken play. He's going down near the 26 yard line. The snap was intended for the tailback standing next to him, and he had it slip right through his hands. That's number 21, Zach Peets. Once the quarterback picks it up and they lose a lot of yards. Gimmick play once again comes back to haunt him here. It'll be second down in 19 now from the 26. Clock running, 3.50 to play in the ball game. All of them in 21. Holy Cross seven, winner gets Riverside Brookfield in the second round. Shotgun twins to both sides. Musha will take the snap. He's gonna look to his right, will throw, and it's gonna be caught on the play. Down to the five. And no one, uh, and all of them, they had all of them had two guys there and no one made a play. Pass completed to Jason Hess inside of the 10 yard line actually at the five yard line. It'll be first and goal from the five for Holy Cross. No one made a play. Well, they're, they're going deep with the ball and the ball's up in the air and uh, you've got the defensive backs there and they're, they're behind them. They're just not breaking to the ball in time. On first and goal from the five, Holy Cross will stay in the shotgun formation. Twins to each side. Musha, quick slant, wide open in the middle of the field. Uh, touchdown, a five yard touchdown pass to DeBuer. Quick slant to the inside receiver to the Twins to the left side. Difficult to defend if you're lined up head up on them or outside. You got to take that away by lining up inside that receiver. So a five yard touchdown pass for Tat Pat DeBuer at the 322 mark of the fourth quarter. We'll pull it to an eight point game as uh, they will line up for one. The extra point on the play coming from Bobby Stevens. Stevens will tee it up at the 10 yard line. Shows you they've got the capability to strike quick with that passing game. But once again, if Allman does what they've done here so far this game, get a long drive going, Holy Cross may not get the football back. And I believe Holy Cross hasn't used any of their timeouts yet in this half. The extra point attempt, the snap. It's a bad one. It's bobbled, and it's going to be pitched back to the holder. He's going to run for it, and he is going to be <laughs> in. No, no good. I thought he almost got in. The referees rule him dead at the one-yard line. Let's pause and take a timeout. Our score now 21 to 13, all of them ahead. It's Pioneer football here on WKBF. The team, we've got 322 to play in the ball game. This game is not over with. The Pioneers went up by 14 after Nate just scored his third touchdown of the night. Just under five minutes to go in the game as Holy Cross marched down the field and they're gonna do an onside kick. Uh, hands team out for the Pioneers, recognizing what is going on. They have it every day out and set. And uh, the kicker, number 58, uh, Don Gelsimino, will have to uh, make it go 10 yards. He's going to kick it toward us, kicking uh, right to left. Nate Just, Tony Klingeman, Hank Bellhouse, uh, Ryan McGinnis on the hands team for the Pioneers. Hey, players lined up near the left sideline here for Holy Cross as the kick, the onside kick is taken. It's a good one and it's free, but Nate Just has got it. He'll fall on it at the 43 yard line, but this game is far from being over and they just gave Holloman, you know, half the field to work with. Would you have done that coach? 
onside now with three timeouts? I would say you probably need to. The way Almond's been running the offense and they haven't been able to stop him, they need to try to do something to keep the ball out of Alm Almond's hands. Unfortunately, they kicked it to the guy that wants the football, and that's yeah. Nate Just. I'm sure we'll see Nate Just uh, plenty on this drive. The Pioneers have to hold on to the ball, not turn it over, crank out a couple of first downs. They'll go with Crosser split out to one side. Wishbone set in the backfield. Hand off to Bellhouse, two hands on the ball. Nice gain on uh, first down, about three yards to the 47 yard line. Clock running, approaching the three minute mark of the game. Our score, all of them in 21. Holy Cross 13, Holy Cross just scored a touchdown. A nice drive uh, aided by passing. Uh, the extra point, they lined up to kick it. It was a bad snap. The kicker uh, flipped it to the holder. The holder ran with it to the pylon, but uh, was held shy and uh, that may turn out to be a, an awful big play in this ball game. Clock's running, Allman came out, three backs off tackle to the right side here, the first play, and now we're lined up, ready to go. Wishbone split to the left. McGinnis checking when to run the clock, when to run the play. Bellhouse up the middle, another three or four yard gain on the uh, counter. They like running to that right side. Just uh, 24 cross, faking the full back to the left side. Timeout taken by Holy Cross. Let's take a timeout. And we'll come back with the rest of the ball game. It's Allman leading 21 to 13, two and a half to play. Don't go anywhere. It's Allman football here on 1270 WKBF. Family Insurance, Dan DePorter, Rule and Rule Agent. Orthopedic and Rheumatology Associates, Del Newton from Allstate Insurance, the Deru Funeral Home, Cavanaugh's Hilltop Tavern, the Brian Weston Studio, and Whelan Funeral Home, Rock Island, and Whelan Presley Funeral Home in Milan. Third, third and two. Yep, third and two from the 47. The 47 of Holy Cross. The Pioneers need to get to the 40, 45 yard line for a first down. They'll go with Barlow. Barlow fighting, fighting, fighting. He's got it on second and third effort. He's got the first down. He was stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but once again, he kept the legs driving and uh, drove those defenders backwards to get the first down, big first down. You know, it's nothing fancy. And the thing oh. that's getting me is you can plainly tell that there's a size advantage for Holy Cross, and it's a wonder that they can't get a better push. Well, once again, I think Allman's very disciplined. They get off the ball quick and they get into them. The running backs just don't go down. Allman looking for its first playoff victory since November 17th, 1990. McGinnis with the with the wishbone. Bellhouse breaks the tackle close to the first down marker as he is near the 35 yard line. The referees are gonna mark him shy by about three feet. It's gonna be second down and short. That last playoff win up in Yorkville in the semifinals of the class 3A playoffs. Holy Cross starting to panic. They're, they're starting to fire their linebacker, something we haven't seen. At the beginning of the game, they started up, uh, what, uh, five yards deep. Now yeah. they're up on line of scrimmage trying to shoot the gaps, uh, starting to panic. But once again, Allman uh, staying very poised. On second and short, a minute 25 to play in the ball game. Allman looking to close this one out. McGinnis will wait, and Mike Ebner will tell him to go ahead and run the play. They'll run as much off the clock as possible. Just still on his feet to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10 carrying people down to the 10 yard line. Great run, but smart run also. He knew enough to hang, keep two hands on the football and just uh, more important than anything right now than scoring is running that clock. Nate just, as a timeout is taken by Holy Cross with 1.11 to play, Alleman. Nate's hobbling a little bit, but I'm, I'm certain uh, he's not saying take me out of the ball game either. Right. They'll have it first in, 10 from the Holy Cross 12-yard line. Uh, Holy Cross has now used two timeouts. I believe they've got one remaining. That's all they can do to stop the clock as they trail all them in 21 to 13. The Pioneers offense uh, really has been their own enemy tonight. They probably could have a lot more points. Uh, just a couple of miscues, a couple of fumbles here and there. But, uh, Pioneers have looked good. They have dominated this ball game, and uh, that's the difference. Holy Cross, I'm sure, is frustrated in the fact their offense hasn't been on the field as much as they'd like. Right. Haven't been able to score the points like they would like to do with their explosive offense, and that's a tribute to the Allman offensive line. To the world of uh, running football, big six style, Holy Cross. First and ten for the Pioneers. A little crosser split out to the lot, to the. Uh, 
opposite end of the field. Ball spotted near the middle of the field. They'll go with the wishbone set. Tight end to the right side. First and 10 from the 12. Bellhouse, a lot of running room down to the five yard line. Both hands on the ball. Uh, Timeout taken by Holy Cross. As the Pioneers will look to, uh, that's it. So a uh, first down to do it. His son Ethan up here in the stands with his St. Louis Cardinals ball cap. He needs a height up here with wearing that. <laughs> I think I saw Gene Oliver around here earlier. Allowin will have it second down and three. The scoreboard says ball at the five yard line, 105 to play in the football game. The Pioneers looking for their first playoff win in 13 years. Allowin will line up in the wishbone. Crosser will split out. McGinnis will keep it himself on a quarterback keeper up the middle. It's going to be close to the first down marker. Not a bad call. And what's amazing is the fact they've got their five defensive linemen up there, but they've got three guys coming as well, Deep, uh, linebackers shooting the gaps, and, and uh, McGinnis is still close to the first down, being able to get the kind of yards with the, with the, the defensive guys trying to shoot the gaps on him. You know, and he, I don't think he got They're going to bring the chains on, and if he doesn't get it, then it's going to be fourth and short. And this game isn't over with yet, although no. it's pretty close. This is key because as, as you saw that last uh, drive by Holy Cross, they've got the ability, they've got the skill kids if they can get the ball off. So. And he is going to be short. You definitely want to get a first down here because you don't want Holy mm. Cross to get the ball back. I would say he's got about a foot to go. I would assume McGinnis will run the sneak again. And this is, oh, they're gonna huddle up. Wow, this is new, Allman is huddling up. Referee will blow. The clock into play. It is running. We have 50 seconds to play in the football game. See, and they don't need to be in any big hurry here to snap the ball either. As John Marks has a stopwatch on the sidelines, he will tell McGinnis when to go. McGinnis under center. We'll take it. We'll have a first down close to the goal line. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Pioneers. And that's going to do it. Now it's time to take the knee. That is going to do it. As Mike Edner applauds the offense. The Pioneers sidelines begin. David Virginia with the headset off. Fist pumps in the air. And they're going to go victory formation. Bellhouse back at the 10-yard line. Well, they haven't even spotted the ball yet, so Allman really doesn't even need to snap the ball with 17 seconds left. McGinnis will drop back, take a knee, that's it, this one. 10 seconds to go, the Pioneers will move on to the second round. The city of Rock Island's got two second round teams. Allman will beat Holy Cross as Holy Cross dejected on the play. And I think they are stunned. I think they fully expected to come down here and have their way against Allman. And that didn't happen, Allman. Won the war of possession, plays, yardage, everything. Take away the one big play, and uh, well, they've worked hard here, you know. Doesn't have much.